We're going to begin our discussion of CSS layout by looking at the box model a little bit closer than we did in the last chapter. For example, first thing I want you to do is to define a site. We'll go to new site. We'll create a new site that we can just call layout. So give the site name layout. And let's point to the local site folder. So wherever you've placed your Dreamweaver CS6 folder, source files, let's point to chapter 5. Right now it only shows the box model, but I'll have some other ones in here soon enough. So we'll save that, and we'll click OK. Now that box model has an index page inside of it, as well as an empty CSS file. So let's double click the index page, and you'll see that I just basically have some very simple information. There's also these two lines here. Now let me show you how to get that working. If you go to your view menu, I'm going to uncheck my rulers, but what I want you to do, if you don't have your rulers showing, just do this. Go to view, rulers, and show. Once you have rulers showing, what I would like you to do is to go to the side over here and click inside one of these rulers, and then drag out this line to about 300. There you go. Now, this little ruler is going to be visible. Don't worry, it won't be visible in the browser. It's just there for you for visual aid. So it says 300. Now, we do have a CSS folder here, but it's empty. So let's open up our CSS style sheets, and we'll create a new CSS rule. Now, notice that the object that I happen to have right now, this blue box, has an ID called container. If you don't already see the ID in your selector, choose it, and in the selector name, give it the name container. So start with the pound symbol, or the hash marks, and then container. Where do we want to save it? This document only? Well, I wouldn't really mind doing that in this situation, because it's just a one-page example. But just to emphasize the fact that the external style sheets are the most effective, I'd like you to click on this new style sheet. We'll click OK, and we'll go to the box model, and we'll choose the CSS folder here. And what we're going to call it is box.css. We'll save that. So what do we want to do with this container graphic here? Well, first of all, I'd like to just go to the box model category. And in the box, we're going to give it a width of 300 pixels. The height, not really all that important at this moment, because the text inside of it is going to define what the height of this is. However, let's give it a background color, just so we could see what it looks like and make some changes if need be. So I'm going to give it a fairly bright color, as you can see here. I'll click Apply, and then OK. Now, you may notice that we don't really have 300 at this particular moment in time. So if you're not at 300, make sure you position this at 300. Still seem a little bit off, and that's because the body still has some inherent default margin and padding in here. So to eliminate that, and to really emphasize the point of our example, I'm going to ask you to click on the new CSS rule right here. And let's just go to the tag. And the tag that I want you to work with is, in fact, the body tag. So you could write it in, or you could choose it from the drop-down menu. Still in the external style sheet. Clicking OK. The only thing I need to do to the body is to set the padding to 0 and the margin to 0. We'll click OK. Now everything should fit very nice and neatly inside of this particular 300 pixel ruler. All right, so that's perfect, and it's fine. Now, the point that I want to make is this. We've got some text inside of this particular containing div. If you look at the code, you can see there's the div ID container and the closing div, and there's two paragraphs inside of it. Well, those two paragraphs are touching the edges. And generally speaking, you don't really want to see your paragraphs looking like this. So the simplest of things for us to do would be to say, hey, no problem. I'll just come to this container. And what I want to do is to just move it off the edge. Now you remember from our previous chapter 
that to move it off the edge, we would have to just create a little bit of padding inside of this container. So I'll double click the container and I'll open up the CSS definition for the container and I'll go to the category called box and we'll look at the padding and same for all, sure, why not? Let's say, well actually I'm gonna say just on the left and the right. Let's say I wanna put in 20 padding on the left and right hand side, 20 pixels of padding and I'll click OK. All right, well, it's done its job. It's, it's moved the text away from the edge, and it's done so over here as well. But look at the problem. No longer now is the size of this container 300 pixels. In fact, if I were to go over to my ruler and drag out another ruler, let's see what it tells us. Notice it says now we have a box that is 340. But let's look at the definition for this container. Here, if I click on it in my CSS styles and I have all showing, you'll see that the properties for the container still says a width of 300. It's not a width of 340, but we can definitely see that the width has been changed to 340. Why is that? And that's a particular quirk of the box model. When you add padding or margin for that matter to any specific element, that inherently changes the width of that element. Now this may not seem like a big problem at the moment, but later on when we get into layout a little bit more in depth, what you're going to be noticing is that sometimes we're going to have to be pixel perfect. If I want three boxes across the top and they all need to be the exact same size because the containing element is only so big. Let's say I had a containing element of 900 and I have three boxes of 300 pixels each. Well, it's perfect because they would all fit. But as soon as I add padding to those boxes, they start to get bigger. And then those three boxes that I had perfectly next to each other now will not fit and they'll start moving either underneath each other or bust out of its containing box and that is a problem. So this is generally a very common issue with a lot of beginners when they're dealing with CSS layout. So it's important for us to understand that this may in fact happen if we add margin or padding to a containing element as opposed to the element inside. So let's get around this and we can do so by going to where it says container and I'll double click it and I'll come back in here and I'll go to the box model and I'm just going to remove the right and the left padding that we had. If I click OK, beautiful, now it's back to 300. But I still want to have my text moved away from the edge. So what do I do? Very easy. All you got to do is target not the container itself but rather target the containers paragraph. If you go to compound based on your selection and your cursor is inside one of these paragraphs, it should automatically say hash mark container space P. If it doesn't, just go to compound and write that in yourself. I'll click OK and now what we're going to be doing is dictating what the paragraph looks like. So I could go to the box model. I could work with paragraph padding However, if I want to move it away from the edge, a very common thing for us to think about is outside of the edge would be margin. So I could go to that paragraph and I could say, hey, you know what? Let's put margin on the right hand side of 20 pixels, same as we did before, and 20 pixels on the left. The only difference is we're targeting the element inside the container, the paragraph, and not the container itself. If we click OK, well, you know, it's gotten a little bit higher. The height has changed because we've squeezed this down a little bit. But be aware that the size of the container is still 300, although the paragraph inside the container has been pushed away from the edges by 20 pixels. So come back in the next video, and we're going to start discussing a little bit more important information about different types of positioning in CSS.